people. So here's my uh, fully functional, semi-complete Ultimate 1022 build. Um, the reason I say semi-complete is because this is not the stock that's going to remain on here. Um, but I was just way too impatient to shoot this thing to go without a stock till Magpul got off their butts and got their stock out there. It was supposed to be out. So I went and bought a Hogue Overmolded. Now, my, I, I like the Hogue Overmolded for the most part. Um, the things I don't like about it are uh, they're a little up here in the fore, fore end here. Fore grip. They're a little bit uh, flexible, I guess. Um, you can actually move the, like, the, it sits off to one side, the barrel does, of the handguard. And you can move it just by, by applying pressure up here, which is just not great for accuracy. I mean, I don't want a flexible stock, so. But it's cheap, and it will get me through until I get the final one on here. And they feel nice. I mean, I always like the feel of these. The rubberized you know, stickiness is pretty cool. Alright, so what I've, all I've done, and I'm sure if you've been watching this video series, you know most of it, but I'm going to do it again. Um, kid brake or compensator. I know, pointless, but looks badass. Um, kid 16 and a half inch bull barrel. This is the lightweight version, so uh, it weighs just a little tiny bit more than the factory like pencil barrel. And you have all the features of a bull barrel. I mean, it's same, same accuracy and everything of a kid bull barrel. So, it's not a whole lot you can go wrong. Uh, it's made with stainless steel. It's milled down. And it has aluminum, anodized aluminum sleeve that's on the end of it. Here, maybe I can show you. Take off the compensator real quick here. Show you the threading. You can see how it works. Get this to focus. Yeah, you see the this is the aluminum sleeve, and then there's stainless steel in the center. This all keeps it real nice and rigid. If there is any heat, it will dissipate it. Yeah, someday this thing will have a suppressor on it, which will be sweet. Now that we can do that here. Um. I have a Harris bipod. I love Harris bipods. Um, actually, every that's all I buy is Harris ones. I, they treat me well. This one here, I think I've had for probably 15 years, and you know, gets passed on a different gun, different gun. But I always keep it in my rotation because it is such a sweet bipod. Fully adjustable. It's not, doesn't swivel like this, but uh, I don't need swiveling. You know, especially on a on a target type gun like this. Um, up here, right in between there, I have the Kid Extended Picatinny Rail. So you can see it runs from there, but it runs way past the receiver, about an inch and a half or something. Um, it makes it so you can, you know, adjust your scope up a little forward for a full-size person, basically. <laughs> Not for kids. Um, I have the kid charging handle uh, and the guide rod assembly. Um, the guide rod is all finely machined and polished, so I mean your action is just smooth as butter on these. Really smooth. I put the kid buffer pin in here, so you don't when the vocal's back, it hits it. It hits as buffer pin. That's right back here, right behind there, and it doesn't have a clang sound when you shoot, so it makes it a lot quieter. A lot nicer, and it's a cheap upgrade. I mean, why not do it? I have a kid single stage trigger set at two pounds a pull. Um, show you something here. It's really sweet, really light. But all right, now watch. Here's the reset. That's it, and it goes again. I'm guess I haven't messed with it very much, but I'm guessing I can shoot this bastard really fast. <laughs> that trigger kind of lends itself to that. Uh, even drop down the pole more, you can probably just barely vibrate your finger and pop off rounds. Pretty sweet. Okay, coming up to here, I have Weaver Tactical Weaver Tactical Scope Rings. 
and mounts. Um, they're not really expensive, like 40 bucks, I think, you know, fairly expensive, but they really are like heavy duty. I like them. Kind of, kind of heavy, you know, I'm keeping this gun fairly lightweight, and those are kind of a big heavy piece, but I want my optics being really stable. Don't want any of that stuff moving. Uh, I went out and I uh, splurged on a Vortex. You know, actually, they're, they're super uh, reasonable in price, and for the glass you get, I mean, you can't go wrong. Um, this one here is a 3x9x40 um, Crossfire 2. <clears throat> it comes with these stupid little caps, which I will be eventually swapping out for like some, uh, you know, flip ups. Um, let see if I can show you the reticle here. There you go. I don't know if you can see the reticle very well, but uh, yeah, the scope is nice and super clear. I love it. Probably my favorite favorite uh, scope I own. I have a few of them, but this one's also probably the most expensive I own. <laughs> $150 scope is the most expensive one I own. Yeah, I rule. I know. <laughs> Alright, so the only things I left on here, factory, are the receiver and the bolt. And I don't know if, uh, if you're going to get... I thought about swapping out the bolt, but I don't know what kind of accuracy gains you'd actually get for swapping out it. Um, you know, until I find out. I'm guessing this gun already outshoots me. I'm pretty sure of that. Um, so I don't know how much my grooves will really tighten up. Uh, once I get a, once I get the, the final stock on here that I know I'm set with, I'm going to bed the receiver. You know, so uh, that, will, that will tighten up any grooves. They may have. I imagine that'll probably do more good than than putting a bolt in. Anyways, um, so I just barely went out and shot this thing. Shot this thing a couple days ago, and uh, yeah, it seemed to. I mean, it functions flawlessly, but I didn't get a chance to actually try any groups with it. They said don't even worry about accuracy until you get about fifty rounds through this barrel. So I just shot it and planked at cans and stuff. And I mean, it hit those fine, but, you know, for extreme precision, like I'm going to be going for in this thing, it's, that's not what I was going for at all. So we'll, we'll see once that, uh, once that I get it out to the range and I actually try to do some target shooting, see what kind of groups it can hold, but I'm pretty sure it was accurate before I had the nice barrel on here. So we will see. All right, guys. Um. I'll keep you posted on range videos and stuff. Alright, and as always, have a nice day.